Welcome to the next video, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Brittany. Awesome, she's standing there awkwardly, but holds it beautifully. I wanna thank her for being such a gem. She's been so good throughout all these videos dealing with my weirdness, okay? And I wanna thank you at home for following through these episodes and these lessons. It's so awesome to have you here. Please let me know what you're struggling with, what steps you wanna learn, what dance you wanna master. And of course, if you're enjoying the breakdown and the buildup of all of these waltz steps. Now in today's lesson, what we're going to do is add on the whisk and then the chasse from promenade position. These are the natural follows to any basic waltz. And what you would have noticed with the basic waltz is everything now is being danced in a closed position. And in today's lesson, at the very end, I'm gonna share with you some ideas on how you can best go into promenade position and then successfully close that through the chasse movement. If you can't do this, I don't know what to tell you. I'm not sure what to do with you because you're not gonna be able to do much in the waltz because we do have to go into these positions. They're sort of important, okay, if you wanna be a good dancer. All right, so with that being said, please enjoy this video. Get your notebooks out and pens and at the end of the video, tune in for my concluding thoughts and ideas. Here we go. Figure names for the basic waltz, adding on the whisk and the chasse. So, change step, natural turn, then our change step again, followed by the reverse turn. And now, into the whisk, and then the chasse from promenade position. Timing for the basic waltz with our three eighths of a turn and our whisk and chasse. One, two, three. 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 One, two, and three. One. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Oh yeah, are you seeing the progress? Are you seeing what we're doing? We're building you up from nothing into something beautiful. And part of this process is understanding a bit about technique. Now in previous lessons, we talked about going around each other, how to create amounts of turn. Now we have to talk about the all important promenade position. Okay, all dancers except for Viennese Waltz will include promenade positions. Now they're positions of the feet and body they're not actually a step, okay? So you have to think about this, all right? So if we look at promenade as a position, this would be closed where our feet are in those four tracks we talked about, our bodies are together, right side to right side, I have my, my hold. Now if I wanna turn to promenade, the lady's body, her right side opens out and the left side is in contact to form a V. Now the man doesn't open out with her, he keeps pretty much the same. And you need to think of it as a sideways movement, not a forward movement. So if you turn your feet out, right, this is bad. You see our hips are together, not good. We always want to imagine promenade as a sideways step. So our feet will also be, you can see Brittany's feet here, inward. So that's the sideways movement. That is promenade. Doesn't matter the figure, that's promenade. Now the second thing about promenade is when you take the next step, the lady is always behind the man. So the next step is in what we call promenade and CBMP. Contra body movement position. Now again, this is a little bit of technique for you, but it means two tracks become one. So I'm now stepping in a line with my back foot and so is Brittany. Now that is the first step out of a whisk. It is so important to nail this. You can see she's keeping her beautiful shape to the right. And from here, her job and my job 
is to do my chasse without my arms being a magoo, right? Like I can't let my shoulder come in. I need to make sure my left side's turned towards her. And as I create my chasse, what I must make sure I do is allow Brittany to close between the second and third steps. So she's closing her feet on the second and then the third and her head, notice where her head is. It's central and then it goes back to the left. Okay, it's back to the left at the point that we finish the actual close, right? So chasseing means to close. So I step, I close my feet, my head should be back to the left and then I can take my fourth step out on the toe and then the heel back in my closed position. Here is one of the big mistakes. You ready? This one's awesome. Let's try and make Brittany look bad. This is not a good idea, all right? Because it probably won't work. But if we were doing a whisk, and we'll talk about the whisk in a second, if she did a chasse terribly, one, because I just did a whisk terribly, right? Your head would be up, and then, can you keep it there the whole time? Go, do your chasse, keep it there? This is not good. And a lot of women make this mistake. See, she's finished the chasse, her head is still to the right, not good. Because now all of a sudden it whips around, whoop, and it's, it's gonna throw us off balance. So the head, think of this, are you ready? Everyone ready? What are we gonna do? Sunrise, sunset, right? I don't even know if that's the right direction depending on your hemisphere, but like basically your head, ladies try this with me, Brittany, so we'll put our fingers together. Okay, so heads to the left, and we're gonna keep our body uh, t position like this, I'm going to turn slightly through, head's going to roll through the center to the right, and a slide open out of the body, the arms stay where they are, and then go back there. So if we count it like this, just the head, we go one, two, three, now you're in promenade, and then bring it back, one, two, and three. So you're sort of rolling it back by three, it's definitely to the left. Do you feel that? So you can stand there as a partnership and before you get your feet, because your feet and body have to do this and it can get confusing. So you can stand there and go one, two, three, as an example for a whisk, and then one, two, and three, back for the chasse. Do you feel that? And so you, the lady can actually practice this movement and notice Brittany's body isn't moving extreme. That's good, right? But her head can absolutely feel the space and it should. You want the head in ballroom dancing. So let's say you get all your steps and turns working. What are you trying to do? The lady is the physical expression of the man's lead. Lead, do you hear that word? The L word, it's like, don't mention that word, right? Ladies are like, give me a better lead, <laughs> right? All across the world, that's unanimous, you know? It's like men are like, why don't you follow me? Why don't you give me something worth following? That's what you should say, ladies, okay? But the point is, is that that rolling through the head really encapsulates the beauty of waltz, the feeling of waltz, the, the musicality of waltz. All this technique is to do nothing but to allow you to dance nicer, to enjoy it more and not fall over and trip around the floor. If you remember the baby giraffe video, yeah, we all started there, right? And still some of us are there, okay? Uh, this giraffe has, you know, a little bit more stability, but I'm still there, you know? But the feeling is, is important, right? So technique frees that. So what is the point of today? focusing on going into promenade for the whisk and then closing it during the chasse. And remember one thing about the timing for the chasse, it counts, ready? One, two, and three. So one, half, half, one. So your feet need to create that timing up on the toes, all right? So don't lower too early. Now one last thing, if we look at our whisk, a whisk is more of a sideways movement than a crossing movement. Hence why I said I did it badly before, because you should not cross your foot behind tightly. See, this would be bad for me. All right, so I wanna think of it more like a change step, okay, like a change step, sideways movement, and at the end of that change step, I'm swaying a little bit to my left, lady to the right, and that allows her to cross a little bit behind, and then we lower at the end of three to go forward. So we always wanna make sure we try and stay high on the toes on three, so we lower very late, so we create a nice swing into the chasse. So one sideways movement, two, three, one, two, and three. All right, so keep that in mind on the waltz that your arms as the man are leading her gently into promenade and then through the chasse, she's coming back. And the whole time, guys, your body, you're trying to keep it between, say, diagonal to wall and wall. You cannot let your shoulders overturn. You'll throw the lady off. I know it's a lot of technique, but this is how we're building it now, right? So you really have something to grasp onto. We're turning properly now. We're learning how to go better, forward and backward, closing our feet together. And more importantly now, we're understanding we can go into a promenade position, and we can come out of it into a closed position, and then continue the routine. So if you've enjoyed this, give it a boom. Give it a little thumbs up. Make sure you tell your friends about this. Indirectly tell your partner about this. If they're not doing well, just send it to them. Say, hey, you know, check out 
seven minutes into the video, right? <laughs> it's a nice little sign there. Um, anyways, it's great to have you. Please join me in the next episode where we're going to break down the next phase of this and complete our Basic Waltz series.